Welcome to NBA Jam, Tapman QC, on fire edition. Boom shakalaka. Something every video game company wants is a successful franchise. All it takes is a detailed, compelling story along with some fantastic play mechanics to hook players all over the world. When this happens, oftentimes the game will transcend the video game screen and end up as either an anime or a big budget motion picture. One of the earliest franchises has to be the Oregon Trail which came out in 1971. Other notables include the more obvious choices such as the entire Mario series, Final Fantasy, The Sims, and Mortal Kombat. This franchise in particular has evolved from the arcades to comic books to movies and has shown no signs of slowing down. Today, I am talking about the first 3D entry into the soul-stealing, heart-grabbing series which is of course Mortal Kombat 4. This game introduced a number of new characters alongside the return of many fan favorites only this time in all its bloody 3D glory. Why were certain types of fatalities removed from this game? What was the Midway title that is often perceived as the testing ground for this game? So get over here, it's time to learn about the history of Mortal Kombat 4. For anyone who has been living in a cave for the last 30 years, Mortal Kombat is a one-on-one -on -one fighting game that utilized digitized sprites involving real actors. However, what set this apart from everything on the market was its use of blood and violence. The digitized characters themselves looked extremely realistic thanks to the characters being filmed with creator John Tobias' personal Hi8 camcorder. Thanks to some cutting edge technology, fantastic sound, extremely fun gameplay and a deep compelling storyline, this game became an instant sensation similar to the frenzy that surrounded Street Fighter 2. Fans everywhere loved the blood and over the top finishing moves that were known as fatalities. As the old saying goes, controversy creates cash and boy oh boy did this game have a lot of controversy. Mortal Kombat and the full motion game Night Trap were among the titles that had parents groups and nosy Nellies all in a tizzy and it led to the formation of the self-regulatory organization the Entertainment Software Rating Board or ESRB. The Mortal Kombat franchise has sold over 80 million copies worldwide making it the most successful fighting game franchise even surpassing Street Fighter 2. After exhausting their resources and taking 2D based fighting about as far as it could go, the Mortal Kombat team decided to make the switch to 3D. In the mid 1990s, 3D fighting games were starting to take over the genre both in arcades and at home. Even Capcom themselves would enter the ring with Street Fighter EX. Before the release of Mortal Kombat 4, the company of Midway would release another 3D fighting game in 1996 which some think was a precursor entitled War Gods. This is a 3D fighting game with controls that were very similar to Mortal Kombat. The button layout was almost identical except the run button was replaced with a 3D button that when held down it would allow you to use different attacks or evasions. It also features combos and fatalities. It was not a commercial success despite it receiving a couple of different home conversions. The original team of Ed Boon and John Tobias have returned to bring their vision of Mortal Kombat into the third dimension. The game would be powered by the Midway Zeus hardware which according to people on the development team was capable of pushing 1.2 million polygons per second. This custom piece of hardware was designed by Mark Lafredo, which for anyone who has seen my video on the game NARC will recognize as Mr. Big. One thing the team wanted to do was revert to the series roots and make everything a bit more darker. They decided to remove the comical elements from the game such as friendships and babalities. 
animalities that were first seen in Mortal Kombat 3 were removed as well since the transformation of a character into animals were considered too difficult to make in 3D graphics. Early in 2 development, Ed Boon found that progress on the game was becoming increasingly difficult due to the increase in staff, thanks to the scope of the game. A couple of new programmers were added, including Todd Allen and Mike Boone, who was Ed's younger brother. Members of the War Gods development team also worked on this title as well. Mortal Kombat 4's development team would eventually consist of 12 people. This time around, fatalities were easier to make due to actors no longer being required to make the character's movements. There was some motion capture that was done, with some of it being performed by both Ed Boone and Richard DiVizio. DiVizio also portrayed Kano in the first three games, as well as Quan Chi in this one. After the characters were motion captured, they used a program called Lightwave to create the models for the characters based on Tobias's moves and sketches. Each fighter is composed of over 3,000 polygons. To keep the gameplay consistent with its predecessors, Ed Boon decided to hand animate frames with timings in a similar fashion to Capcom Street Fighter EX. Mr. Boon has said that Mortal Kombat 4 was the biggest jump in terms of gameplay and presentation since the original Mortal Kombat. Because this game used brand new hardware that was still being developed, this resulted in a number of delays with a large amount of the game being tested on two-dimensional hardware using pre-rendered characters. To promote the game, Ed Boon, John Tobias, and a handful of the development team took the arcade game on a road tour which traveled the country visiting 35 different cities. This was unofficially known as the road tour version. It only featured nine characters, and within those nine characters was Noob Cybot, who ended up becoming a hidden character, but only in the home console ports. Despite Midway's previous efforts using a hard drive in the game War Gods, this game used an EEPROM instead due to the lower cost, and it would allow faster access time, allowing for changing backgrounds in mid-fight. There were actually three revisions to the arcade game, but more on that in just a bit. Mortal Kombat 4 was unleashed in the arcades by Midway in 1997. As the story goes, thousands of years ago after doing battle with the elder god Shinnok, Raiden was responsible for the death of an entire civilization. He waged a war that resulted in the entire planet Earth being plunged into centuries of darkness and banished into the Nether Realm. After Earth's mightiest warriors defeated Shao Kahn, Shinnok escapes his prison from the Nether Realm and, along with the evil sorcerer Quan Chi, attempts to take over. It's up to you and your band of brothers to rise up once again and take him down. Mortal Kombat 4 is a one-on-one -on -one fighting game which plays very similar to the previous titles. You have your standard joystick along with a high punch, low punch, high kick, low kick, and a block button right in the middle. Also making its return from Mortal Kombat 3 is the run button. As I mentioned, despite using 3D graphics, the characters are restricted to a 2D path except for sidestepping. To sidestep left and right, you have to double tap the run button. This allows you to dodge projectiles as well. Upon starting up the game, you have a couple of different options including standard one-on-one -on -one combat or two-on-two -two combat, which does require a couple of extra credits. To help with all the teeny weenies in the audience, you now have different difficulties. After selecting your character, you see five towers, each one representing five levels of difficulty. They are Novice, Beginner, Warrior, Master, and Master 2. Each warrior has a health bar at the top of the screen along with a run meter underneath. To prevent those nasty individuals who abuse it, the run meter will actually diminish the more you use it, but it does refill. 
The chain combo system also makes its return where players can string together a number of normal attacks to perform a pre-programmed combo. What's different about Mortal Kombat 4 is that they added a maximum damage cap which automatically breaks off the combo similar to Killer Instinct's K -K 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 combo breaker. Another major addition to the gameplay is weapon-based combat. Players can perform a specific joystick and button combination, which allows your character to whip out a weapon and deal some much-deserved punishment. Obviously, the weapon increases the damage dealt by the player and changes certain attacks. However, the weapon can be knocked out of the player's hand with the first attack landed by his opponent. At this point, either player can grab the weapon and use it. Speaking of picking things up, some stages have various objects that can also be picked up and thrown at opponents. Rocks and even severed heads can be picked up and thrown. The fatalities are back with a vengeance, seeing each character have two different ones. These are definitely more grisly with blood spurting arteries and bones a poppin'. Gone are the multiple rib cages and mannequin bodies from Mortal Kombat 3, and in its place are a number of spine ripping, head popping finishers. Even Liu Kang, who had one of the tamest finishers in the game, sees the return of his dragon fatality, only this time, after munching on the opponent, he ragdolls the body with blood shooting everywhere. Quan Chi literally rips his opponent's leg off for his fatality and beats the person to death with it. Rather than describe each one, let me just show them off. Finish him! <laughs> Fatality. Finish him. Oh, you go to another. Fatality. Finish him. Finish him. Fatality. Finish him. Finish him! Shinnok wins! Fatality! Finish him! Fatality. 
finish him! Sony 
Mania wins. Fatality. Finish her! Sonia wins. Fatality. Stage fatalities are also back with two different ones available. Something else that is unique for a Mortal Kombat title is the continue screen. Your character is falling head over heels, tumbling around like a drunken mess while the timer counts down. If it reaches zero, you are impaled on a number of bloody spikes. Pretty cool stuff. As I mentioned, there are a couple of different stage fatalities with the first one being in Goro's Lair in which you can uppercut your opponent into the spikes on the ceiling. The other one is the prison in which you can toss your opponent into a large metal fan which slices and dices them into a gooey bloody mess. The cast of characters this time around includes 15 playable characters with 7 brand new fighters. The combatants are Fujin, Jarek, Kai, Shinnok, Tanya, Rico, Quan Chi, along with returning characters Sub-Zero, Sonya, Scorpion, Reptile, Liu Kang, Raiden, Jax, and Johnny Cage. For the first time in the series, some characters featured an alternate costume as opposed to simply being a palette swap. Some of them even featured callbacks to previous games such as Sub-Zero's unmasked attire from Mortal Kombat 3. Despite selecting the alternate attire, the versus screen image of each fighter remains the same. The first version of the game to officially enter arcades was Revision 1 with only 12 selectable characters. This original revision featured no endings and no final boss. Revision 2 was released that same year, bringing back Johnny Cage, Jax, and new character Rico. A number of characters also received new weapons. The final version to enter the arcade and the final Mortal Kombat game to appear in arcades was Revision 3. This update added a second fatality for every character, new costumes, and fixed some bugs left over from Revision 2. Revision 3 even added the secret character of Meat. Meat started out life as a skin created by art director Tony Gosky for each character that was subject to a fatality that destroyed their flesh. The name Meat was simply given to the model so it could be used in the game. It was later decided to make him a playable character as a hidden easter egg. In order to use him, you have to defeat all the challengers in group mode. After that, any selected character becomes meat. While the character resembles the bloody skeleton, its moveset took whichever character was selected. In revision 1.0 of the game, Noob Saibot is a hidden character that could be accessed using a cheat. However, when revision 2.1 came along, he was replaced with Rico. Just like previous Mortal Kombat games, there are lots of hidden secrets in this title. Dan Forden, who yelled out Toasty in the previous Mortal Kombat games, has a new line thanks to this title being in the third dimension. If you hold start while performing Scorpion's Breath of Death Fatality, he yells out Toasty 3D. The combat codes have also returned with a number of cheats including random weapons, silent combat, throwing disabled, red rain, and more. Buried deep in the arcade code is an unused portrait for Katana. Revision 1.0 also contains the character bio screen even though by default they are disabled. You can re-enable these with a cheat and they are pretty funny. Each character has a joke type commentary so let me go through these really quick. Liu Kang is just a nice guy in general. He supports his local fire and police department and donates a large percent of his income to local charities. Sonya was never the first one picked at school when teams were being chosen for a game. Now she'll show them all, damn it! 
Born of the youngest of 14, Raiden did a lot of pointing and laughing at everyone else in his family, since he had superpowers and they didn't. Scorpion grew up on a farm in Wigamaw, Pennsylvania. When his best friend punched him in the neck, he vowed to find him and show him that was not satisfactory behavior. Having been a former model for the bicycle playing card company, Shinnok set out to change his public image to more of a badass. Wingod was always embarrassed because his mom made him wear his hair in a ponytail. Now he's got quite an attitude. Sub Zero Zero made a pretty good buck as a magician during the late 70s. He lost it all when the market crashed in 87 and turned to the dark side. As a boy, Noob was a bit of a jerk. There was a lot of pointing and laughing at everyone else in his family since he had superpowers and they didn't. Speaking of the original 1.0 revision, it featured no personalized endings or final boss. As I mentioned, Katana was originally supposed to be in the game. Someone else that was initially slated for the game was Kano. They decided they needed a couple of new characters instead, so Jarek was created, but he is essentially a clone of Kano, even right down to the heart rip fatality. Even though Katana's portrait is still found in the arcade game's code, she ended up being changed to Tanya. The original roster was going to include Noob Saibot as well, but they decided to go with another new fighter by the name of Rico. To me, Rico always reminded me of Nightwing. A few pieces of licensed merchandise were released, including a Mortal Kombat 4 original video game soundtrack, which was released on Water Tower Music. There was also some pretty sweet t-shirts as well. The arcade game was well received, although it didn't make the splash that Midway had hoped for. The game did receive a few home ports thanks to developer Eurocom doing that voodoo that they do do in their attempt to make it as arcade accurate as possible. The crushing pound of a mallet. The shattering blow of the club. Edge of the blade. They call to you. Mortal Kombat 4. Darkness is calling. The first one we are taking a look at is the PlayStation version, which was released in 1998. To start with, we are shown the TV commercial for the actual game itself, which is a bit strange considering we already bought the game. By the way, I haven't seen acting this bad since my honeymoon. The game itself has a few extras over its arcade counterpart, such as the ability to use Goro, which is pretty cool. Something else that was added were the CGI intro and ending screens. These looked pretty good in the arcade, but here at home, the CGI looks great. All the blood and bone-crunching gory fatalities are present for your viewing pleasure. A practice mode was included which shows all the characters' moves and fatalities. There are also multiple endurance fights, team battle mode, and a tournament. The graphics look pretty good with some fairly smooth animation, although the frame rate does dip every so often. What's not so smooth are the Jaggies when compared to the PC, Nintendo 64, and especially the arcade version. The game translated well onto the PlayStation and it plays just like the arcade game for the most part. There is even a theater mode which allows you to view all the endings you've unlocked. As to be expected, the music and sound effects are fantastic although the load times are significant. You do have some gameplay options including changing the difficulty, number of continues, blood on or off, etc. Overall though, this turned out to be an excellent arcade conversion. The 
the Nintendo 64 version turned out really good, although certain things had to be changed. Right off the bat, you'll notice that the commercial is gone. This is to be expected due to the cartridge format the Nintendo 64 used. Also missing are the CGI intro and ending screens. The music has also taken a bit of a hit, but the sound effects and voices are really clear. The graphics themselves are very nice, featuring smooth animation. The frame rate does drop every so often though. The jaggies that were present in the PlayStation port for the most part have been done away with. They are not as smooth as the PC version, but they look a bit better than what was on offer for the PlayStation. The same match types and options found in the PlayStation version are present here, including the ability to play as Goro. The controls are pretty good, although I did struggle with the Nintendo 64 pad back in the day. Thankfully, this version features no loading times. <laughs> Before tackling the best version, let's go ahead and take a look at the worst one. Surprise, surprise, it's the Game Boy Color version. This port is just a reskin of Mortal Kombat 3 with a portion of the Mortal Kombat 4 roster. If you absolutely adored the horrible, broken gameplay and flipbook animation of the original Mortal Kombat 3, then you will absolutely love what the developers have done with this one. Not to date myself, but I've seen better animation on an episode of Terrence and Philip. Now when I said this was just a reskin of the previous title, I was 100% serious. Like the original Game Boy version of Mortal Kombat 3, you only get 8 selectable characters and 1 hidden fighter. It's a fair amount of combatants, but not when you consider the arcade game had 15. You only get 4 backgrounds from the arcade game, so these will be repeated quite often. Something I did not expect were the full motion video fatalities. While these are kind of cool the first couple of times you see them, the wowness factor wears off rather quick. There are a couple of garbled voice samples as well, but the quality sounds like something you might hear coming out of a spirit box. The controls are atrocious with very few moves per character. The game is single player only, which makes perfect sense because you wouldn't want to torture your friends with a game like this. Back in 1998, the best port to play was the PC version. The overall game itself is very similar to the PlayStation port, including the CGI cutscenes. The resolution of the in-game graphics and polygons have been smoothed over, and although they are not as nice as found in the arcade original, they still look great. The music is pure CD audio goodness, and all of the voices and sound effects are here. We get the same extras including being able to play as Goro and additional team and tournament modes. Something that was not carried over from the PlayStation version are the frame rate drops which means everything runs silky smooth. The controls are nice and tight and it plays just like it's big brother. <laughs> In 1999, Mortal Kombat Gold was released for the Sega Dreamcast. This was one of the original launch titles for the system with some added spice, thus the gold in the name. This game puts back in some of the older characters from the Mortal Kombat universe including Cyrex, Melina, Katana, Baraka, and Kung Lao. These new characters do retain most of their older moves and fatalities. 
These new finishers are not animated as well as the other characters in the game because Eurocom added them in and not Midway themselves. They look okay, but they don't have the flair of the arcade original. This version also includes the Ice Pit stage as well as the other hidden characters such as Noob Saibot, Sector, and Goro. The sound effects and music are really good and the game controlled really well. This was the best way to play this game on a home console back in 1999. Cyrus wins. Round two. Fight. And there you have it, you combat fanatics. The History of Mortal Kombat 4. Personally, I always liked this game and I just ran across it for the first time in years at the Midwest Gaming Classic. Of course I had to try it out and I was really surprised to see that it was the only Mortal Kombat game at the event. There was also a line of people around the unit which is a testament to this game's popularity. Now it may not have been as big of a hit as Midway had hoped it would be, but it was still fun to play and it helped usher the world of Mortal Kombat into the third dimension. If you've never had the chance to whip out your weapon all the while doing a little slice and dice action, be sure and give this game a shot. You'll be glad you did. If you like this video, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Also, if you would like to support me on Patreon, please click the link below. If you would like to contribute but not sign up for my Patreon, you can always click the donate button up above. Thanks everyone for watching.